How many of you are afraid of something? Spiders, snakes, what? Heights, the boogeyman, Sasquatch, what? Bridges. What? Cats? Cats? Taxes. Taxes, no. Oh. That's just something you gotta deal with. There's no re- there's no need to fear that one. Snakes maybe, spiders maybe. Um, but fear is something that can debilitate us, right? I mean if we if we think about things and and worry about things and, and work through our mind all of the different scenarios that could happen, right? As parents, we all fear that our children are going to have something happen to them, right? We all fear that our children are going to get into trouble. They're going to get into a car accident. That something's going to happen. They're going to get in with the wrong people, right? And you have that. And if you sit down and think about it and work it through irrationally, it can come out to, you know, you can make up all kinds of great scenarios to the fact that you would never want to leave your house because fear could keep you and lock you in. About three years ago, I had several people asking me why I wasn't giving up. And fear could have taken over. Because see, three years ago, that's what, 2013, March of 2013. So that's a year after I resigned my call, my last call. That's a good two years into the call process. That means I'd been looking for a congregation to be a pastor of for two years, was without a call, was fearful that I was going to be able to provide for my family, was fearful that something was going to happen that I wasn't going to be able to take care of, was fearful of the fact that I was never going to find a congregation to be a part of. And if I had let that fear taken over, then we would not be here today. Fear. Something that every one of us has to deal with. But it can be something that helps us and moves us forward. And the reason I'm talking about fear this morning is what did our reading say? And on that day, the first day of the week, what day is that day? What day is this? Sunday. Sunday. But more specifically, what day is this? It's the Sunday of Easter. Mary Magdalene had just gone to the tomb that morning. She'd just gone, saw the rock rolled away, met with Jesus in the garden. Jesus told her, don't hold on to me because I have not yet ascended. But go and tell my disciples that I am ascending to my father and your father. To my God and to your God. And Mary went back and told the disciples everything that she had seen. And later that day, the disciples were locked in a room for fear of the Jews. Does anybody else find it just a little bit ironic that they got happy when a Jew came and stood in the midst of them? Jesus was a Jew, by the way, if you didn't know that, right? But they were locked in a room for fear of what was going to happen to them. And it's probably not unfounded fear, because they had just witnessed the man that they'd been following, their, their most coveted teacher, was arrested and tried on trumped up charges, not only by the religious elite, but by the political authorities of the day, right? The the Roman government, and then executed. And what's going to happen next? They're going to do that to me. So it's probably not unfounded fear. But Jesus comes and stands among them. And rather than saying, why didn't you get it when I sent Mary back to you to tell you that I was alive? He says, peace be with you. And were the disciples happy with that? Were they joyful at that point? No. What did he have to do? 
It says he said, peace be with you. And after he had showed them the holes in his hands and the hole in his side or the mark in his side, then they were joyful. And you see, this Sunday is, as I said earlier in the service, low Sunday, because normally we don't have good attendance on the Sunday after Easter. But thankfully we do. It's also known as Doubting Thomas Sunday because this is the same passage of scripture you will hear every year at any church that follows the Revised Common Lectionary. John chapter 20, verses 19 through the end of the chapter. John chapter 20, verses 19 through the end. This is the story of Doubting Thomas, right? Because Thomas is the disciple that doubts. So the next question is, I asked how many people have fears. How many people have doubts? I doubt I'm going to be able to pay my taxes. (laughs) I doubt I'm going to be able to do, you know. I doubt I'm going to be a good father. I doubt I'm going to be a good husband. I doubt I'm going to be a good pastor. I doubt I'm going to be a good... I doubt the resurrection actually happened. Is a pastor allowed to say that? I find it hard to believe sometimes the things that we confess every morning when we gather together for worship. I believe in the Lord, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, who came to earth, lived a life among us, died, descended into the dead, rose again. This God that created everything knows everything about you. Is that not incredible? Meaning completely unbelievable? That the the divine creator of everything knows every last detail about your life and cares about you intimately. That is just super extraordinary, incredibly unbelievable. But it's absolutely true. You see, we give Thomas a bad rap because Thomas wasn't there. Right? The ten disciples are locked in a room for fear of the Jews, and where is Thomas? We don't know. We will never know until it doesn't matter. But the other ten are there. And Thomas, when they meet with him later, they, the ten that were there tell him the same thing that Mary Magdalene told all of the disciples. We have seen the Lord. And Thomas said, unless I get to see what you got to see, I'm not going to believe. And so we give Thomas a bad rap because all he wants is what the other ten got. He wants to see the holes. He wants to know for a fact that the man that he followed, the man that he saw beaten and killed, is actually alive. And it's no less than any of the rest of us would have asked for if we were in that exact same situation. And here's the kicker on this, and it's a bad translation, and I really wish we would redo this this version or this verses of the Bible. Because it says, and the reason that we call this Doubting Thomas Sunday is because Doubting Thomas, right? Jesus, what does Jesus say to Thomas? He says, here, put your hands in the holes in my hand and stick your hand in my side. Do not, what does it say? Do not, but believe. The Greek is actually do, do not a pistos a la pistos. Y'all got that, right? I know at least one person in here got it. Do not a pistos a la pistos. In the, in the Greek, when you want to negate a word, you put the letter alpha in front of it. Ah. So a pistos is the opposite of pistos. Which in sense would then make us believe that doubt is the opposite of belief. Doubt is the opposite of faith. And is that true? A pistos. Pistos is the word that means trust, faith, or believe. So what Jesus actually said here is, do not be unfaithful, but faithful. Do not be untrusting, but trust. Do not be unbelieving, but believe. He didn't say don't doubt, don't question. 
but believe? Because is belief in faith blind? Are we supposed to stop asking questions when God miraculously shows up in our lives? Are we supposed to give up questioning what's going on around us in our lives? Is it wrong for us to ask, where is God in this situation? There's still a family in this congregation who is asking that question. And will be. There's several families in this congregation that are asking that question. And will be for the rest of their lives. Because it's hard for us to see where God is at in several situations. But here's what you need to hear this morning. The disciples were afraid and they were locked in a room. And every last one of us is afraid about something. Be it rational or irrational. We're not going to get into that. But every last one of us has a fear. And all of the disciples doubt it. If we go to another passage of scripture a little bit later on in Matthew chapter 28, you all know it as the Great Commission. And Jesus said to the disciples, go and therefore making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. But a little bit before that, when Jesus met them on the mountain, it said that they gathered together with Jesus on the mountain. And Matthew says, or your, your, your versions of it will say, and some doubted. And I tell you this morning that that word some is not in the text. It says in the original Greek, they gathered together on a mountain and the 10, 11 of them were there with Jesus and they, they worshiped him and they doubted. They questioned what was happening. You see, we look as doubt as being the opposite of faith. I'm telling you this morning, it's okay to have fears as long as you don't let them dil- keep you down. I was going to use a bigger word there, but decided not to. As long as you do not let your fears captivate you and hold you someplace that you shouldn't be. Because Christ is always walking with you. Right? God doesn't give you any more than you can handle. Wrong. God doesn't give us everything. Sometimes we make up our own situations because we're sinners and we walk into things we shouldn't do. God is always there to give us what we have to help us handle what we have been given. It's not that God gives us anything. It's that no matter what we're given, God is there to walk with us through it and to handle whatever it is we've been given. So live in the fear, but don't let it keep you captive. And you all were given a little card this morning, and now you're going to find out why you were given that little gray card as you walked in the door this morning. I want you, if I invite you to, you don't have to, if you want to, you can. There should be pencils in the pew. I want you to write something that you doubt. On this card. And turn it in with the offering. Because here's the kicker. The other thing that we have to understand. Fear is something we all have to live with. And Thomas is branded the doubter. Which is actually a good thing. Because Thomas is a twin. And who is his twin? The joke is Thomas the tank engine. We don't actually know, but I saw one person comment on a, on a commentary I was reading this past week that said, I always like to think that I am Thomas's twin because Thomas taught me that it's okay to question and it's okay to wrestle with your faith. It's okay to ask to see the things that everyone else has gotten to see. And it's okay to ask God questions because doubt is not the opposite of faith. You want to know what the opposite of faith is? Certainty. Because as I said last week, we can't prove the resurrection. I can give you all kinds of proof for it, but there's no actual proof. You have to believe it on faith. And I believe it without the shadow of a doubt. But I can question God and know that God is going to be okay with me questioning Him. And that might be hard for us to hear. But that's what Thomas teaches us. That fear is real. And that questions are always going to be there. But God is big enough to handle your questions. And God is big enough to be there and walk through you through everything that's going to come. 
So don't ever lose faith. Do not ever be unfaithful, but faithful. Do not ever lose trust in God. Do not be untrusting, but trust Him in all things. And do not be unbelieving, but be believing. Because even though we can't prove it, I believe it beyond a shadow of a doubt that every last promise that He's given us is true. So if you have a question or a doubt or something you've been carrying with you for maybe 10 minutes here, something that popped up during the sermon, something you've been thinking about for years, write it on the card. Put it in the offering plate. If you actually want me to respond to it and you're brave enough to, write your name on it. And I will try to answer you. I can't promise I will. I can't promise I can. But I'm willing to walk with you through that. Because that's exactly what God has said to each and every one of us. So don't be afraid to question. But don't be unbelieving. 